Hey everybody, this is Dwight Peters from QuarterWaters.com, the site for social entrepreneurs, where we tackle issues, we make an impact, and we share business tips along the way. If you are listening to this program or watching it, it's because you want to change the world through the power of business. You came to the right spot. Today with us, we have the founder of Idea Mensch, Mario Schultzki. Mario, welcome to the program, man. Thanks, Dwight. I'm excited to be here. We're glad to have you here. Um, Mario, you know, what you guys do is a very interesting thing, and I want you to share with our viewers. But before you do, just give our viewers a, a brief background of who you are and, and how you got started. Well, I'm, uh, um, I guess I'm a 30-year-old German guy who is uh, living in the U.S., um, I run Idea Mensch. I'm the founder of Idea Mensch, which, as you said, is sort of a um, a community of people with ideas, um, social entrepreneurs, but just entrepreneurs in general, nonprofit leaders, authors, etc. Um, and actually, my in my day job, I uh, part time run digital strategy for an advertising agency in Los Angeles. So I I tend to live the kind of life where I go back and forth between. Um, Los Angeles and, and Europe. I, uh, I have roots in both places, so um, I'm, I'm on the road a lot. Awesome, awesome. All right, cool. Now, let's, let's jump into it. What is Idea Mensch? It's a community you explain of, of entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, nonprofit leaders, but it's a platform for change. Yeah, yeah. You know, let me, um, I'll take a step back. I'll tell you how I started Idea Mensch. When, uh, um, which was about a couple of years ago, and you know, I came to this country as as, as sort of a first Im uh, generation immigrant, um, right. and uh, as part of that, I've always had to work for other people in order to keep my work permit. Um, and I, but I was always the kind of guy I was always jonesing to start my own business, but I was never allowed to. Okay. So, but I was naturally obsessed with entrepreneurship. So at some point, um, as I was sitting there in my corporate office waiting for my green card to come in, I thought, well, you know what, I just got to get started. And rather than start my own business, I figured I'd start learning from other people who had started businesses. And that's how Idea Mensch started. Um, the, the big thing with Idea Mensch where I, you know, I try to make an impact and, 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 and sort of what I try to uncover you know, obviously the word idea is in there, the word mensch is in there, which is a German word for person. Um, it also has a Yiddish meaning in, in that it's a good person, which I like that. Um, but what Idea Mensch is trying to uncover is not what are the ideas that people have, but how do they bring them to life? Because you know this, an idea in itself is rather useless. Um, you need to do something with it and you need to bring it to life. So the focus of Idea Mensch is to, you know, I've, I've interviewed a lot of people. I've interviewed people like Seth Godin and Craig Newmark, the, um, you know, the founder of Craigslist, Nancy Brinker. She's the lady who started the Susan G. Komen Foundation, yeah. um, Daniel Pink. I've interviewed a lot of famous entrepreneurs, authors, but same token, every day I interview people who nobody has ever heard of because part of what I want to do is – um, is also help uncover and, and help people promote um, their new ventures. And it's yeah. not about, you know, having to have success in the past. It's about what you're doing moving forward. And I believe that we can learn as much from people like you and I as we can from Seth Godin. Definitely. You know, we have a very similar, uh, actually, we have a very similar story. The reason why I started Quarter Waters is because I wanted to make a change, and I figured that the best way for me to make a change is to reach out to people that are already doing it, learn their story, learn learn how they're making an impact, and see what I can learn from them, and not only see not only for myself, but actually to share it with others that have a similar interest. Uh, Seth, you you interviewed Seth. How did you reach out to him? Like, how did you get in contact with with these big name entrepreneurs or any entrepreneurs? I know how I started. It, it was it was it was an interesting process, you know. A lot of cold emails. How did you get it going? You know, it, it was interesting. I mean, Seth, that that's a great sort of story because before I interviewed Seth Godin, I had mostly interviewed friends of mine, All right. and uh, and you know, I was really struggling to gain traction. 
and you know, I've, 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 I sort of have a massive man crush on Seth Godin. I think he's just, you know, um, he's incredibly smart. He's incredibly kind. And, you know, we can learn more from Seth Godin than we can from, you know, you and I. I mean, I, I like to say that we don't, but um, he's an incredible guy. Anyways, so one night I had a few too many glasses to drink, and I emailed Seth Godin asking him if he would like to do an interview. Yeah. And then I woke up the next morning, and I, you know, I was sort of like, oh, crap. Um, what did I do last night? Um, you know, other people are concerned about who they wake up next to. And, you know, I'm concerned about who, you know, emailing entrepreneurs out there. And, uh, and I checked my email and much to my surprise, Seth Godin not only emailed back, but he had already grabbed the questions off my side and answered them. So, and then I'd interviewed Seth Godin and, and truth be told that, you know, made things a lot easier moving forward. Um, but but yeah, you know, like I email people, I, 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 I email people a lot. And, you know, at this point I've, I've done over 700 interviews. Um, so most of the interviews at this point are referrals. Um, I always ask people who's one other person who I should be talking to. Yeah. And that's how I always get the next interview. You know, there's a lot of PR people pitching now. I mean, you know, at this point the interviews are coming in, um, I've built a little bit of a reputation. I mean, I've been doing this for a couple of years, but but initially, Dwight, it, it's all email. Um, it's all reaching out and you know having the courage to do so. Awesome. I, when I saw your site, I knew I had to shoot you an email, and then I found your personal email, so I said, why not go for it? So you created this platform. You know, you have a great idea. You, you want to really, really create something where people could learn. How did you get traction? How did you start getting it going? You you mentioned that in the beginning there was, you know, roughly no traction. How did you get it going? Well, I mean, like if you look at, you know, sort of starting at the most simple part, I pretty much just copied a, a WordPress theme. Um, you know, my logo is still the logo that was auto-generated by the theme. It was <laughs> called Press Theme at the time. And, uh, um, you know, I, I came up with 10 questions and, um, and I started emailing them out. I don't really do video interviews, even though I'm starting to get into it a little bit. Right. But most of my interviews are all in, uh, via email. Um, so no video, all email. And, you know, I just started by, you know, sort of trying to articulate the concept of Idea Mention, what I was trying to uncover. And, uh, and it, it's been a constant, you know, evolution since then. I mean, I've probably changed my questions, even though there's a few questions that have stayed the same, 10 or 20 times. Um, and, you know, what happens is you, you know, I, I haven't had sort of the, you know, my, my interviews don't necessarily go viral um, because of the way I, I title them. So, um, you know, if, if, if you see an interview on a site and the interview headline is how Joe Schmo went from, you know, um, making $10 a day to making a million dollars a day and now he lives on the beach in Hawaii. Yeah. Like, People, people click on that and they, uh, um, you know, and, and they, they read it or at least they click on it or they share it on Twitter. Um, my interviews are much more profiles on people, so it's not quite as sexy. So my growth has been really, really constant, uh -huh. meaning I probably grow 20 or 30 percent every month, but I've never grown more than that. Uh -huh. um, and I pick people up along the way and they tend to, uh, you know, to stick with me. All right. Let's talk about that. How can you can you, can you put a number to how big your community is to talk about the impact that you're creating? I have between thirty and fifty thousand readers um, a month, and but they're sort of spread all over the place. Yeah. You know, I've got I've got my email people, I've got my you know Facebook people, I've got my Twitter people, I've got my RSS subscribers, and truth be told, a lot of my readers are new in the sense that. You know, I might interview someone and, you know, they tell 10 friends or they tell 100 friends about their interview. Yeah. So I get 100 new people on the side. Out of those 100 people, let's say 10 stick around and come back. And, and that's sort of like how that growth happens, right? It's, it's been a very continuous thing. I mean, I do, I do too, because I do do email interviews, which is a lot harder than, you know, what you're doing with video. Yeah. I do two interviews every day. Um, and I could do five interviews every day. I don't because I don't want to, you know, I want it to be a good experience to read Idea Mensch. I don't want to sort yeah. of flood it. 
bombard people. Yeah, definitely. How do you gauge impact? Besides uh, the, the amount of followers you have or besides the, 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 the amount of RSS subscribers, how do you gauge impact? You know, that, that, that is a great question. And, uh, um, and I, I tell you this, um, one of my sort of guiding principle is to make impact a KPI. So I have not measured by my success at all by the amount of money that IDMN just made, or which it hasn't made a lot, um, or, uh, or, or my traffic numbers. I... The way I've been able to measure my impact is sort of a very soft metric in the sense that it comes down to the people I interview and, and, and the very specific impact that it has on them. So I'll give you an example because, you know, ultimately when, you, when, when I started this, you know, I've had no sort of money gold behind this. This hasn't been a big for-profit venture for me. It's, it's been driven by passion. Yes. And I really do want to help people. So I'll give you, you know, so, so ultimately then every morning you wake up and you got to decide what you're, you know, what you're uh, um, excited about. And I, I'm not really excited about making 50, 100, 500 dollars a day off IDMNs, but rather like I'm excited about the impact. So I'll give you a story. Um, I interviewed a girl named Alessandra Russell. She was the founder of a, uh, I'm an organization which at that point was called the Recycled Child. Okay. Uh, she's, she's a young American lady who uh, moved to Thailand to fight child prostitution. I did her idea mention interview and, you know, we sort of got it out there and spread the word. And one of my readers, who is a documentary filmmaker, contacted her, made a movie about her, a documentary, and that ended up being, uh, you know, filmed at, uh, or, or screened at Sundance a couple of years ago. Um, you know, that obviously had a huge impact on awesome. her organization. That is the stuff that ultimately, like, that is the kind of impact that I want to make. But that impact is different every time, right? So yeah. it's not like, so the impact isn't about idea men or, or even metrics that, that I can sort of lay out there. It's about the impact that I try to have specifically to other people, and it always changes. You mentioned something very important, and I was hoping – I wanted you to say it. I didn't want to say it. I wanted you to say it because I, I love when entrepreneurs come on the program and they, they mention this word. How important is passion? You know, I wake up in the morning and, um, you know, like you, I'm not making no money off this site. That's not the goal. The goal is to – for me over here is to build a community of change makers where we can have somewhere to come together, throw ideas around and, and truly change the world. How important is passion? Speak about that a little. You know, I think it's the key. Um, and, and I don't know if it's necessarily if passion is the right word, but, um, I think, you know, in, from the interviews that I've done, the most important thing that I've learned is that the entrepreneurs who are the most successful, um, who ultimately persevere and win in the long run, are the ones that can answer the why. So if you think about your business, what do you do, how do you do it, and why do you do it? Yeah. And if you just focus on the what do you do, or the how, how do you do it? Yeah. Um, that isn't very sustainable. But if you have a strong why, and um, and that why drives you, and that can be passion, you know. And sometimes it can be, you know. I, I interviewed one gentleman, and now his name escapes me. You know, he was homeless. Um, you know, his why was to get off the street. Yeah. Um, I interviewed another lady. She had stage three cervical cancer. Um, couldn't have sex anymore. And started a dating website for people who couldn't have sex anymore. Yeah. So that was her why. So like sometimes it's not born out of passion, but it's born out of like a really strong why, a really strong reason. So I'd say this, the stronger the reason, the stronger the why, the more likely you are to succeed. Awesome. Well said. Well said. I'm here going over my notes because I, I really want to, you know, get as much as I possibly can out of this. Um 
Okay, we went on that. What advice? You know, you talked about a few of the the, the past interviews that you have um, had, and um, you know, we talked about the passion and the the more, more importantly the why. But whatever advice would you share with social entrepreneurs watching the program? Um, you know, I, I sort of have a few things. I mean, I think the hardest thing always is like you can have an idea and um, and you can try to make a difference. But other than if you actually do it, um, it doesn't matter. So the, the first piece of advice I always give people, whether it's social entrepreneurs or artists, it's, it's to try fast. So, you know, in, in the startup world, there's this whole, you know, Eric Ries, you know, the, the lean, lean startup, startup movement, this yeah. whole concept of failing fast. I don't like to think of, of failing. I like to think of it as like trying. So you want to try fast. Um, whatever idea you have, figure out what the first step is that you can take in bringing that idea to life. And one of two things will happen. You either will succeed and gain momentum or you will not succeed and learn something. And, and then you sort of try the next thing and you try it fast. So you don't think about, you know, what happened too long and, and you just kind of like get started. That is always the most important thing. The second thing is that, you know, what tends to happen, and, and I don't know if you do this, but if I write down everything that I want to accomplish today, I have a five page to do list. And if you have a five page to do list, you tend to not get anything done because <laughs> your, your, your mind is constantly trying to contemplate, you know, what it should do next. So uh, accomplish three things every day. I call them three feats. You know, pick three things that will really move your business forward that might take some courage that, you know, require you actually finishing something. Yeah. And, and just accomplish three feats every single day. Don't worry about, you know, that entire to-do list. Don't worry about 17 things. You know, don't worry about 150 things. Don't just do one thing. Do three feats every day. Um, another thing I'd say is that um, I, I call it uh, focus on what you can't copy. Explain. Uh-huh. Explain. Truth be told, um, there is so much great technology out there right now whether it's, you know, WordPress templates or SEO tools or, um, you know, design tools, um, landing page templates, you know, membership sites, you know, everything is out there. And the more you try to, and, and when people get started, oftentimes it's, it's, you know, we are overwhelmed by our quest for perfection. Yeah. So we might look at a tool that's out there and we might say, well, you know, but that, that's not exactly what I need. I'd rather have this. And, and I say bullshit to that. Whatever you can copy, copy. If you want to start a site like IdeaMensch, go on IdeaMensch, look at exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. Give it your own spin and copy it. Just run with it. Just run with it. Just get started. And focus on the things that you can copy, like, you know, building relationships or you know, cold calling people or emailing people, but don't get stuck trying to reinvent the wheel because truth be told, um, the wheel is pretty good nowadays. <laughs> and then, and then the, la the, the last sort of piece of advice that I oftentimes give is, um, you know, when in doubt email, uh, you know, every day I, I hit a wall, like, you know, on every project at some point you're going to hit a wall where you're like, Oh crap! That didn't work out. What do I do next? Yeah. Um, there's people out there who can help you. You know, there's relationships out there that you can start. Just just start emailing people. You can find anybody's email address out there. Yeah. I'll tell you that from my experience. You know, it's a lot easier to get a response from someone you know famous than it is from you know Joe Schmo like me. Um, because oftentimes, like they they get less emails. You know, you'd be surprised. So. When, when you sort of hit a wall, when you're stuck, like figure out who you can email and just start emailing people. And then, and then the last thing is like measure your impact or yes. at least think about your impact. You know, don't, don't just think about traffic numbers and revenues, you know, that stuff isn't sustainable. Um, you know, I, I, I do, you know, it's like the, the stuff that ultimately will sustain you 
is the impact that you make and the feeling that you get to have about what you do. Because truth be told, you know, if you just want to make money, um, you, you can just work for somebody else. Yeah, but, pretty much. Yeah. But if you have a strong why, if you really want to um, make a difference, then, 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 then make that part of your mission. Will do, man. Mario, this has been great. I don't want to leave anything out. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to really, you know, get as much out of this again. And I think the advice that you gave was sound efficient. So I think I'm going to end it with that. <laughs> anything else, Mario? No. Hey, man, thank you for uh, for having me on. And, uh, um, you know, let me know once the interview goes live, and I'll help you promote it. Oh, definitely, man, definitely. Thanks for coming on the program. Dwight, thank you so much, and you're doing a great job.